Welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today I'm going to craft a primitive smoker. So last fall one of the deers that I harvested I actually just froze the entire rear quarter. So I thawed that out a couple days ago and I sliced that up into about quarter inch slices. So smoking is going to be a, a primitive method of preserving the meat. That's going to let me stretch out a big kill like a deer over long term. So the amount of deer that I'm doing right now approximately is going to be about a quarter of what you'd have to deal with if you drop a live deer on the ground right now. So that's something you got to be aware of is the time and the energy involved in putting away uh, large quantities of deer like that. So I recycled a tripod from another project uh, and I've got a fire blazing behind me. So the process is going to be to not just cook the meat. All right, I had this fire up over uh, like 200 degrees. All that's going to do is cook the meat that's going to preserve it for just a few days and then you're going to get bacteria and all other kinds of thing in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the temperature below 150 degrees, uh, put a tarp around my tripod and encapsulate it in smoke. Now that smoke's going to penetrate the meat and actually cure it. That's going to give me a much longer uh, shelf life on the deer itself. So I've shot some other videos in the past at this fire pit. So this originally was a keyhole fire but for right now, that's not really going to work for me. I need a place where I can drag coals over, but it's got to be a little further away from the fire than the stone keyhole that I made right here. So I'm going to have to improvise with this a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm building just a real quick rack system to hold the meat up. I'm trying to use a minimum bit of gear, so I'm just using a little bit of bank line and I'm putting a Canadian jam knot on the corners. Uh, this thing's not really going to be holding out of weight. I don't feel the need to do my lashes and with the frapping on something like this. This is just a temporary get by uh, smoker. Now you can make this look real pretty, but to be realistic, um, if you were to harvest a big animal, or say you happen to find a, like a salmon stream when you have an opportunity to harvest a lot of fish at once, this is something you would bring to the animal or bring to the active stream. You know, you can break this tripod down when you're not using it, keep it out of the way, but rather than drag a deer to my tripod and smoking area, I just assume take my tripod to the deer or just take a little bit of string and you know a saw and make a real quick one when I get there. You know, actually I've had a change of heart of this. Um, like I said I was going to try to get a blazing fire and drag coals over but it's smoking pretty good right now and it's not too hot. I can hold my hand under the where the rack's going to sit and I can hold it there you know comfortably. That's telling me it's definitely not too hot where I'm going to start cooking the meat and not smoking the meat. So I'm going to try to shimmy this uh, tripod over a little bit, center it up on a fire just a little bit more, and then we'll go ahead and put the meat on. So this is a significant amount of meat here. Now this is uh, woodland style, I suppose. It's only salt and pepper, no marinade. You know, no Worcestershire sauce or Tabasco sauce, um, nothing like that. So it's just salt, pepper, meat, and smoke.
So I was able to uh, just lay sticks out, get the meat up, and it, like I said, it's it's high enough off the flames where it's not really going to cook itself. If this was a bigger kill, say I didn't wasn't doing a quarter of a deer, I was doing a whole deer, I could just tear this up, but then I would continue to have to keep rotating the meat around. So this is going to be easier for me. Now the last step is going to be to uh, capture all the smoke, so I'm going to take a tarp and go ahead and wrap it around. If I didn't have a tarp, obviously I could use the hide from the deer that I just killed. You could also use any type of like uh, you know green branches, with leaves on that kind of thing. But a tarp's a hell of a lot easier right now. Okay, so now it's just a waiting game. I have to continually rotate the meat uh, top to bottom and then shift it around to make sure that it doesn't have a cold spot in there somewhere where some of it's going to get overcooked, some of it's going to get undercooked. If this tarp was uh, all the way to the ground, of course, that would hold more smoke. That would work out better for me. Uh, this is tarp number two. First tarp, I let it get a little too close to the fire and my nylon um, tie out actually melted on me. So I'm, it looks like I'm going to be repairing that in another video. But for right now, uh, we're all set up. So as luck would have it, I found a hickory branch when I was uh, walking around the perimeter of the wood line looking for wood to burn. So the thing with smoked meat like this is any flavor that's in the wood smoke is going to be in the meat. So you definitely don't want to use a pine, you don't want to use cedar, you don't want to use any type of real sappy wood because you're going to get that smell and taste into the meat. Now hickory is a, is a good option. So what I did is I went at, went at it with my axe a little bit and I'll continue to do that through the burn. And I've got my bush pot going with water in it and I'm just soaking the wood. And then I'm going to set my stove. Uh, this will be upside down essentially. It's supposed to sit this way. I'm going to have it upside down and I'll just continually feed the wet uh, wood chips into here. Now this is kind of a punky wood fire anyway, so it's going to have a lot of smoke. But you can see when I put the wet, the, the wet chips on, that changes things big time. So I'll just keep doing this. You know, I'm going to tend the fire now, make sure it's enough fire, make sure it's not too much fire, and keep my smoke going up the center of my smoke. So the meat's been smoking for about an hour now. I'm going to go ahead and rotate them uh, top to bottom and then shift them around on the rack too. Here's a look how they're starting to stiffen up a little bit. This is the top side. Now you can see, hopefully you can see, where the stick sits. Obviously that part's insulated, not getting any heat, not getting any smoke. This is something you definitely have to be present for. I mean, you can work on other tasks, but you really got to pay attention. My fire got away from me. Got way higher than I anticipated uh, with punk wood, which was kind of surprising to me. Um, I could put my hand up here under the meat, now it's okay, uh, but just a few minutes ago with the flames coming up it was a no-go. So I just splashed some water on it real quick and you see now it's uh, smoking more than a Cheech and Chong movie. So I just pulled back the smoker, we're about two hours into this, and you know, we've got varying degrees of success, but it's getting there. You know, this piece here, obviously you can see where the stick is. It's not quite cooked. This is also a thicker piece. I aimed for a quarter inch. Uh, some of them were a little thick, some of them were a little thin. This one's right at my quarter inch. Uh, it's still too flexible. 
I'm looking for this to be brittle. Uh, sun's setting. I'm going to be out here the rest of the night probably screwing around doing other things. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to be, uh, you know, tending the fire and watching the smoker rolling the meat back and forth. So the sun's set and we've been at it here smoking this jerky and it's finally all completed. Here, let me show you here what it looks like. Um, it's not super tough. You know, obviously I just had salt and pepper so it could use a little bit more flavor. I'm going to go ahead and clear the rack off some of the, uh, the bigger pieces. I might pan fry or leave them in the smoke a little bit longer. But for the most part, uh, this has been a success. Big thing is time. You know, you just make sure you allow enough time and enough fuel to, to, uh, to start this process and finish it. So, you know, it takes what it takes. You know, that's the issue with primitive stuff. It just, it takes longer. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning Over Bushcraft. See you next time.